Hey guys, you're watching BTECT. I'm Basil. This is the Motorola G5 Plus. 5.2 inches of screen. You've got a fingerprint scanner below the display. Above it is a loudspeaker as well as a 5 megapixel front camera. You've also got buttons to the side. Really easy to press, easy to navigate around. Volume rocket and power button. Down at the base, 3.5mm headphone jack and a micro USB. Shame it isn't a USB type C. Left hand side, nothing of note. Up at the top, you've got the SIM card slot which has a micro SD card slot as well and around the back it's a camera hump now people generally don't like camera humps but what I will say is a 12 megapixel camera around the back of this thing which I will come on to later stacks up really really well so I don't resent the camera hump too much if it means that that is to blame for the quality of the pictures this thing takes like I've said over and over we've got the gold one you've got a Motorola insignia around the back it is a non removable back cover battery um, yeah in hand feels very very good you can see that kind Kind of always on display of sorts and very very fast to respond fingerprint scanner that supports gestures as well as far as the screen goes it's around 424 pixels per inch 5.2 inches 4 hd resolution looks very very nice so i don't think anyone's going to complain about sharpness and clarity on this thing but what you might complain about just by comparison to flagships is brightness when it comes to outdoor viewability still looks really good still relatively easy to see but there's no kind of a hyper over the top outdoor viewability mode so if you live in a very very bright area that might be one thing to be concerned about you do have adaptive brightness on here though which is ace um, and you've got some customization modes for color as well standard vivid no specific control over color temperature and there is no blue light filter so anyone concerned about eye strain you'll want to download a third-party application like twilight generally screen 7 out of 10 I'd say is a fair bet for this bad boy let's talk through the user interface and on the surface it's a pretty stock version of Android you've got your Google screen to the left hand side pull up from the bottom and you've got your applications tray and I can pull down from the top two tier notifications tray but this being Motorola stock Android does not suffice there are a few really awesome value adds first off is that fingerprint scanners gesture centricity you can swipe left to go backwards swipe right to go multitasking so left is backwards tap is to go home and long press actually switches off your phone or turns off the screen at least. I can unlock the phone and you can also see that if I long press and keep my finger held, that's how you activate Google Now. So it's a really, really easy to get your head around fingerprint scanner, very similar to Huawei's, but it isn't the same. And that's one thing I will say, it'd be great if manufacturers or Google standardized the gestures that fingerprint scanners support because having all the different ones is just confusing for me. This being Motorola, there are also some old school Motorola actions such as double karate chop in order to fire up the torch and you can also wrist flick to fire up the camera nice and quickly and you can also pick the phone up to answer a call put it down upside down to silence etc so it's pretty standard stuff but again 250 quid it's really nice to see all those additional value adds while still retaining a really nice stock android ui and if you're in europe then it's snapdragon 625 ped with three gigabytes of ram and 32 gigabytes of internal storage now if you're an absolute gaming beast it isn't the perfect setup but if you're a casual gamer 32 gigabytes of storage will be ample the fact you can expand it by micro SD card is great and on top of that the 625 processor while it won't benchmark like a champion will be able to handle all your basics and some pretty advanced games like Soul Calibur and Assassin's Creed What's also really awesome about the Moto G5 Plus is that the front speaker is front firing. So it can go up nice and loud and is very, very difficult to cover up. So whether you're gaming or whether you're watching on it, it's really, really enjoyable to use for that. But if you do put it at top volumes, it can get a little bit shrill. But if you do put it at top volumes, you are supported when it comes to that 3.5mm headphone jack and you can just output to a Bluetooth speaker. What's also sweet is the fact you've got a whole host of shooting modes on here, including pro mode, that's manual mode. So you can customize everything from the focus right through to the ISO. I can flick through to the closest focal range, for example, take a picture of my finger right there. That looks about right. And 
double tap, you can see really nice and crisp for a handheld shot for a 250 quid phone. Jumping out of that, and you've also weirdly got a pro mode for the selfie camera. The selfie camera isn't mind blowing, it's fair, resolution is five megapixels, um, but the pro mode means that the fact you can slow down the shutter speed, you'll probably be able to eat just a little bit more out of it than most selfie cameras in the price range. In pure automatic mode, picture quality is excellent for the price. And what's awesome is that it doesn't crumble in low light either. In good light, high dynamic range works well and the general dynamic range is solid. So even on bright days, it manages to capture a full gamut of detail. And with a 3000 milliamp battery under the hood of the G5 Plus, it lasts a full day and it ships with a turbocharger as well. So it's gonna charge nice and quickly too. Generally 250 quid, can't complain about the G5 Plus from its good design to its good screen to its excellent user interface and camera, right through to that battery which lasts a full day. Connectivity wise and storage wise, I wouldn't have minded a little bit of extra storage under the hood. I know other regions are getting 64 gigabytes of storage, but with that micro SD expandability, if it isn't gaming that's gonna fill up your storage, you'll still be well, well served with this thing. So yeah, I definitely recommend it for you or your friends and if you have no friends my top tip make them some honeycomb seriously you'll be the most popular person in the world mm. it's so good like crunchy bars have nothing on this try it bye A gold phone deserves a gold candy. And so today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to make honeycomb or hokey pokey, depending on where you are from. And we're gonna start off with a full HD video sample shot at 30 frames per second. And we can run through the ingredients list. You've got 250 grams of sugar. You have 80 grams of golden syrup. 40 grams of water and eight grams or one tablespoon of bicarb. To show that there is actually some bicarb in there, we can test out the four times zoom. So I'm talking and I'm also hand holding this. And based on what's going on on screen, it looks pretty steady to me. So this looks like a really, really decent video camera from the off. Can also test out how the macro focus performs, getting nice and close to the golden syrup. And based on what's going on on screen, can get a little bit closer. It seems to be doing a really beautiful job of blurring out the background and keeping the foreground nice and sharp. So now let's mix it all together. Now we're going from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. second. Once again, full HD. And we're gonna combine everything in a preferably stainless steel saucepan. Can flick that out of the way. And first thing we wanna throw in there is the sugar. Next up, it is the water. I say combine everything. We don't wanna put in the baking powder just yet. Throw in the water and the golden syrup, which I've heated up for a little bit in the microwave just so that it is nice and runny. Now, before we start cooking anything, we need to prepare a few things. And to do this, we have a Pixel XL on the right-hand side, which I'm standing behind now, and a Motorola G5 Plus on the left, which I'm standing behind now. Now, moving around again, you can see we've got a sheet pan lined with some baking parchment, and we've also got a little whisk. We're gonna need that so that when this starts bubbling and we combine the bicarbonate of soda with our bubbling mixture, we can pour it all straight into the sheet pan. Now we've got everything on a really low heat. We want it all to come to a gentle simmer. We don't want to move it around, don't want to agitate it, definitely don't want to stir it. But one thing that we do want to do, at least until it comes to a rolling boil, is cover it. That's just gonna hold in all of the moisture and condensation and clean up the sides for us so we don't have to. Now we're recording this on two phones on a tripod. We've got the iPhone 7 Plus on the right hand side and the Motorola G5 Plus on the left. Full HD, 30 frames per second, flipping between the audio. So by the end of this, you should know how much better a 260 odd pound phone is or worse than a 700 plus pound phone. You want the mixture to be boiling away in the saucepan with the lid on for a good three, four minutes until you take the lid off. It should release a fair bit of steam. Take a note of the color. It's probably gonna be a pretty light amber color. At this point, it's all about changing that color. As you heat it up, it gets really hot, by the way, like so, so hot, so be very, very careful. 
We've got this coming really close to the color we're looking for. We've got the video light on as well um, to help you really see what you're going for. And you see it's starting to go a really nice and deep color just before you hit those brown shades. And then you wanna take it off the heat pour the bicarbonate of soda in and whisk it all in there for about five or six seconds or so. Then pour all of that mixture out onto the baking tray lined with baking parchment that's sitting on a heat resistant surface for your honeycomb to set. And now that the magic's happened, I can explain the science behind the magic. While doing that, I'm gonna play a slow-mo video shot on the Moto G5 Plus of the mixture bubbling away. When you combine bicarbonate of soda with an acid, you get CO2. So that's what makes a honeycomb puff out like crazy. That's why you put bicarbonate of soda in a cake. If you've got, I don't know, cocoa powder, that's acidic as well. Now sugar, by its very nature, isn't acidic. It's got a neutral pH, but when you caramelize it, i.e. cook it on a stove and make it change its kind of structure, you're turning it into an acid, and that's the point at which you wanna apply the bicarbonate of soda and pour it out so that you get your nice, floofy honeycomb. Once your honeycomb's set, you can break it up and either cover it in chocolate or enjoy it as is. One thing about honeycomb with regards to storage is it does not like moisture. Moisture in the air or direct contact with water. It makes it fall apart and turn to nothing. Covering it in chocolate creates a really tasty airtight sealant. Or if you do want to just store it in a Tupperware, make sure it's firmly closed and that no moisture gets inside. Oh, it's so good.